The Chicago Bears win in London, 35 to 16. Caleb Williams, four touchdown passes on the day. The first went to Cole Komet. Komet catching two touchdown passes from Williams, also adding long snapper duties as well. As Chicago now riding hot in the UK at four and two. Jacksonville now drops to one and five after Jacksonville got their first one of the season against Indianapolis last week. Let's break down the second London game of the season. Pete Prisco, Rick Spielman, Jamie Eisenberg, I'm Tommy Tran. So it's 35 to 16 Chicago, Bears and Jags. Pete Prisco, where do you want to start? Well, I'll start with Caleb Williams. He was outstanding today. I mean, he had a seven-on-seven -seven game against that defense. They're awful, and uh, he he took advantage of it. He made plays. Started off slowly, settled in. Sometimes that's a good thing for a quarterback when you when you do see that kind of thing when he responds to trouble and he plays the way he does after having a little slow start. That's a good thing for the quarterback and good for his future. Love what I saw from him today. But again, he's playing against JV team with uh, they can't cover anybody. It's a disaster over there. Yeah, he 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 played phenomenal day. I thought in the more the game went on the more comfortable he got you're seeing a bunch of playmakers all this stuff that looked really good on play paper during the offseason now is coming to what you're seeing come uh, to flourishing during the season the other thing is all of a sudden swift is becoming part of this offense and earlier in the season he wasn't doing anything now they're being able to run the ball a little bit better swift can make plays out of the backfield catching the ball so this offense is getting ready to take off and catch up with the Chicago Bears defense. Three straight outstanding games for Swift and three solid games for Caleb Williams. And, and you said it, Rick, the playmaker stepping up. You know, we haven't seen Cole Komet when everybody's healthy do what he did today, you know, clearly two touchdowns, but um, he stepped up a couple games ago when Keenan Allen and Romo Dunze were out. He has a big game with the two touchdowns. Keenan Allen didn't do anything really since week one, five catches, 41 yards, two touchdowns. Now you're having to defend a lot of different players, and that's tough when the quarterback is starting to get it. And so uh, offensive line played much better as well. How many times was he sacked today? Probably not very much. He got sacked three, a couple, three, three sacks. Times. Okay, so he got hit a few times. But um, you're looking at a team that's really starting to come into its own offensively. And like you said, they're missing some guys defensively. Brisker, for example, was out in the back end of that defense. So to be able to do what they did today. Jacksonville, however, is an absolute dumpster fire right now. Like, what are they doing, Peter? Are they firing Doug Peterson or are they keeping him? I don't think they'll fire him this week because they're staying over in London, but if they somehow lost next week, I think they would fire him. But they, they need to start all over again. Shad Khan is in London, uh, has meets with the media and says, oh, I firmly believe in this group. You can't believe in this group. Look at the mess they put on the field. It's disgusting. It, on one drive, they cut the lead to, tw I think it was 24-10. They cut the, or 21-10. They cut the lead. Four, three straight plays. They got them off the field. They had uh, too many men on the field, got another chance at it. Stopped them again, got a holding penalty. Stopped them again on third down, had another holding penalty. They go in and make it, they get a touchdown, the game's over. They're sloppy, they're unorganized, it's a mess. The play calling stinks, the defensive coordinator is awful, and the general manager has no earthly idea what the hell he's doing. I, it's time for him to go. He's like a cockroach. Everybody gets blown out, and he somehow survives. It's ridiculous. Uh, they have to blow it all up, and as sooner, the better. You interested? No. <laughs> why, why? I could do this once a year. <laughs> yeah, but look at the bright side. You might be able to clean that mess the up. The question, though, Pete, is how and why they've dissolved so fast. Because middle of last year, before Lowry's got hurt, they were in line for the one seed in the AFC, and yet they collapse at the end and are off to a terrible start in 2024. Well, I'll tell you what I've heard from people inside the building is last year the young players didn't know how to handle success. They went in as the number one seed against the Ravens that Sunday night, got blasted. That was the end of it. Didn't know how to handle it. Well, that's your coach. Okay, then you go back into this season, the owner comes out and says, hey, look at this roster. It's the best they've ever had in the history of the franchise because he's listening to the general manager because he wants to put the pressure on the coach. That's what happens. You have split. Everywhere Trent Baalke has been, he had a split. Jim Harbaugh, split. He hires Jim Tom Sula. Why? Because he can control him. That's all he wants. Now he brings in the defensive coordinator. I've heard that was his choice. That guy has no earthly idea what he's doing. He rotates guys in like they're hockey players. It's ridiculous. First series, the guy gets the first down, out come the starters, in come the backups. Linebackers rotate like they're hockey players. It's a mess. They're terrible. It's a mess. They're going to ruin that quarterback. You know what they need to do? Hire somebody who can run the organization from a football standpoint, who can hire a general manager, who can do the football standpoint, and then hire an offensive mind like Ben Johnson to fix it.
I'll just say this. <laughs> Other than that, how was the flight, Mrs. Lincoln? <laughs> we were up there two years ago when we actually went together and handled uh, training camps. And uh, we were up there, and we thought, Trevor Lawrence, and you were big on your soapbox at the, at the training camp. I was standing on a box. You were standing on a box, wearing literally. Teal, wearing teal. Yeah, wearing teal, no, and your uh, Jackson <laughs> Mayor of Jacksonville deal. But we were thought that Trevor Lawrence, after what we saw at the end when he brought him back in that playoff game win against the uh, Chargers, that he was going to be MVP and going to be in all these MVP conversations. And then it had a big downturn, especially the second half of the year last year. So I don't know what's going on, but I still think Trevor Lawrence is a really good quarterback. For whatever reason, something has disconnected since what we saw, you know, in that playoff game in the first half of last season. I don't know what that is, but they go and give this guy $55 million a year. Uh, I don't know whose decision that was, but the way he's been trending downward, was that the right decision to get them that kind of contract? Yes. And and, and look, he had a drop, the opening drive. You go get a touchdown yeah, there, it might be Davis. different. Then you saw Gabe Davis drop another touchdown pass. Then you saw Brian Thomas drop another touchdown pass. He throws a terrible interception. Here's why I think he's gone bad. This is my theory. I think the offense is disjointed. They throw to the side way too much. They don't throw down the field. Did you see anything down the field early in the game? No. You got Brian Thomas. He can go down the field on anybody. You don't throw down the field. They throw all sideline. The other part of it is, all we heard last season was, and on into the, on into the offseason, don't let him turn the ball over. Don't let him turn the ball over. He's turned the ball over way too much. You know, he went into two weeks ago, he had one turnover in the first four, one in the first four games. Not turning the ball over, but you know what he's doing? Playing tight, not yep. free, not loose. That's the problem. When you point the finger, point the finger at the roster at Trent Baalke, you point the quarterback issues at the head coach, Doug Peterson. You gotta point the finger at Lawrence a little bit, though. Oh, yeah, he gets on to keep making excuses for him. Well, but again, when you hear guys around the league talk about offensive coordinators that you respect, guys like Ben Johnson and then Kubiak and other guys, and I hear they're chomping at the bit if they had an opportunity to work with them, that tells you what they all believe in the guy. But still, I mean, it, it, how many excuses are we going to make for him? Because it was Urban, his rookie season, now it's Doug Peterson and the well, offense. He, well, he was hurt last year, so he got to put the second half of last season out. He shouldn't have played. That was stupidity on his part. He put himself out there in a time when he shouldn't have played. This year, I'm putting it on the fact they make him play tight and the offense is disjointed. Keep an eye on Travis with the injury to yeah. just see what happens going into next week. Jags will stay in London, play to Wembley against the Patriots in the third and final Monday game. The Bears are 4 and 2 heading into their bye week. Full highlights of this game and every game on the NFL Sunday slate right here on CBS Sports HQ. We've also got news and scores. It's all here, it's all free.